Hey, welcome back to Dan's Chess Lounge, everyone. In round five of the Canada's tournament, the most interesting game of the day was Levon Aronian against Alexander Grischuk. Let's go ahead and dive into the game and see what happened. Aronian was white. He started out with d4, knight f6, c4, g6, f3. This is like an anti grunfeld system here, this f3 move. It discourages black from playing d5 right here, uh, mainly because if white would capture back and then the knight captures typ typical Grunfeld stuff, normally there's a knight sitting right here on c3, and then the knight captures the knight captures the knight on c3, and then black would get his typical Grunfeld structure. Where, but with f3 being played here, uh, black does not get his typical Grunfeld structure. And this is a, a known variation that's better for white. So this kind of discourages black from playing d5 right here. So instead, Grishuk played c5 here. And d after d5, the game is transposing into like a Benoni defense. D6, E4, E6. This attacks the center. Uh, black uh, just can't let white uh, have this huge center and not put up any type of uh, struggle or contest in the center. Knight C3. E takes D. C takes D. Bishop G7. Knight G, E2. Now, this is the problem piece here for white. In these type of positions where there's a pawn on f3. It's similar to the King's Indian Samish variation where uh, white struggles to find a good home for the king side knight. So right now Aronian is doing a little maneuvering because uh, he's going to put the knight on uh, b3 eventually. So knight bd7. This knight wants to come to e5 and have a, a, a grip on the center. Knight g3. And now that induces black to play h5. And with the idea of continuing on to play h4, which would really misplace this knight temporarily. Bishop e2. Knight h7. This move here does a couple things. First off, it releases the bishop on the on the long diagonal here, but it also uh, reinforces the pawn here for when after black plays h4, he can also play g5 and continue on with like a pawn storm on the wing here, and this knight would reinforce reinforce that advance. Bishop f4 it attacks the d6 pawn so queen goes to e7 to protect it queen d2 sets up the battery here especially if black castles kingside then this is going to be a nice chance for white to play bishop h6 and try to swap off the dark square bishop also this prepares white to castle kingside if he would like h4 hits the knight and now this poor knight has to go back, not even go back, it has to go to the back rank. F1. Sad, sad knight when it has to go all the way to the back rank. G5. Hits the bishop. Bishop goes to E3. And black is doing well out of the opening here. He's gaining space on the wing. And he also is playing in the in the center after the knight comes to e5 here that's going to be a great knight with on a beautiful outpost uh he has the bishop on this long diagonal here and the, the diagonal is open there's no pawn here on e5 blocking it so black is doing quite well the only bad piece really is this knight which is on h7 right now but the question is where is his king going to go because if he's pushing all these pawns on the king side over here, on the wing, 
over here. It, he's probably not going to want a castle kingside. So he still has to figure that part out. Knight e5. G3. After G3, you have bishop d7. G takes h. G takes h. Now with the pawn structure being destroyed on the king side, chances are, are pretty uh, slim that either king is going to castle on the king side over here, on the wing over here. Chances are pretty slim. So now you have white occupying that open file right away with rook g1. F5 is a central, central strike. F4 hits the knight. Knight goes to g4. Attacks this bishop here. Uh, white ignores the fact that uh, his bishop can be captured. Really, the knight is probably better than the bishop anyway in this position. So white doesn't care about the knight attacking the bishop. So he plays e5. The pawns must roll. Charge forward. You have d takes e. Now, I asked a question to you guys out there. What would you do here? Would you just recapture the pawn? F takes e. Would you go ahead and capture the knight at this point? What would you guys do here? What's a good move here? Would you play d6? Would you play knight b5? There's a lot of options. A lot of options. Queenside castle. You know, to protect the king. Get the king safely tucked in castle before you launch an attack. What would you guys do at this point? Well, Aronian decided to play d6. Excellent move here. Hits the queen. Queen e6. Now you have knight b5, which is threatening to fork the king and rook and queen, like a royal fork, on c7. So, what happens if the bishop captures the knight? If the bishop captures the knight, then you have bishop captures bishop, check. King goes to d8. I have queen a5, check. b6, block. Queen a6. And now, the black king is stuck in the middle of the board. This is a winning position for white here. So let's go back. The bishop... Can the bishop can't capture the knight right here? So instead, Grisha decided to play rook c8. After rook c8, Aronian played knight c7 anyway, and that forks the king and queen. So Grisha has to give up the, the exchange. He plays rook captures knight, pawn captures rook. Now white has this monster pawn on c7. White wins the rook for his knight. So. Now you have e takes f which is threatening to capture the bishop here with the queen, knight, and pawn. So what happens if bishop takes f4? Then you have bishop d4 Queenside castles, queen a2, bishop d3, which stops uh, any any madness here once the queen goes to a1. Check. So this is a very double-edged variation here, but white is still better because of this monster pawn here on c7. Only one square away from promotion. So let's go back to the position in the game. Rook d1 was played here instead of bishop takes f4. And this here is a slight blunder, aka bad move. It, is, it throws away whatever advantage white had here. Uh, the engine actually gives this position 0, 0.00. And that's because white's king is in a terrible position. It's stuck in the middle of the board. Knight g5. Black is getting ready to bring more attackers into the position. 
So then you have c8, promotion to queen, check, bishop captures. Now you have queen d8, check, king goes to f7. Now, Aronian king snap off this knight right here on g5. But instead, he chooses to play queen c7, check, which is fine. And right here, king g8 was played by Grease Chuck. And it's a blunder. This loses instantly, actually. If Aronian can find the correct move, this move here is is a complete blunder, and he can win the game. So, guys, do you see what the correct continuation is? What should Aronian play right now? Pause the video. See if you can find it. Okay, I'm going to play the move. Rook d6. After rook d6, and Aronian did find rook d6, by the way. Queen went to f7, and now the reason why rook d6 was so was was a must is because now Aronian can snap off that bishop there on c8, and he's a clear piece ahead. It would be lights out. So you would think that. If you played rook d6, you played that because you saw queen captures bishop, right? Well, I got news for you guys. Aronian blundered. He did not play queen takes bishop here. He played queen d8. Dun, 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 dun. I can't believe it. He just had a complete brain fart. He completely threw away his victory right here. Queen B8, Queen D8, excuse me. Instead of capturing, it was a free piece right there. The bishop was completely his, but he didn't take it. He had a he had a brain fart. If he would have taken the bishop here on C8, it's just game over right here. He's up a complete piece. So after Queen D8, now Grisha can block. He can defend the position now. It's, it's the game is completely different. So I bet Aronian is still kicking himself right now, thinking about this blunder. So Bishop takes on f4 because it was still being attacked by the pawn. Knight e6 hits the queen. So then you have Bishop c4, which pins the knight. Queen takes, rook takes queen. King goes to h7, rook takes. Which takes their liquidating pieces and simplifying the position. Things are getting more clear here. It's looking very drawish at this point. Bishop d6, knight g5, rook g2. Basically, they're just maneuvering uh, their pieces. There's not really any progress here that's really being made. Bishop goes to b8, bishop d4, h3 hits the knight, knight goes to e5. Which hits the bishop. Bishop d5. Knight d3 here. Forks the king and the pawn here. And Grisha did not go for this continuation that I'm getting ready to show you. In the game, Grisha played knight c1. And the game quickly fizzled out to a draw. But if Grisha would have went ahead and took the pawn here on b2... Then you would have knight e3, knight c3 check, king goes to d2, and then black snaps off the bishop here on d5. White captures back, but the end position here, the resulting position, is that Grishuk has three pawns for the exchange here. Now... He could have pressed Aronian in this position here. I mean, the game might have still ended up a draw, but who knows? He still he still has has chances here. He he has a slight chance here to pull out something or to work some magic. Sandy was game still, but Black did have a slight advantage here. But Grishuk didn't want to go for this line here. He didn't want to play on like this. So instead of playing knight captures, the
the pawn on b2 here. He played knight c1 instead. And then after king d1, the knight goes back to d3. Knight d2. Knight f6 hits the bishop. And at right here, bishop f3, the players agreed to a draw because there was no progress being made. They were just shuffling the pieces, pieces around. And play might have continued this way. Knight takes b2. Now it's a different position, though. Um, black doesn't have that slight edge after capturing on b2. Because now, after the king goes to c2, black plays c4. Bishop captures a7. Bishop captures, and then king captures the knight. And it's just a draw position here. Uh, it's it's exactly the same amount of material and black has two pawns for the exchange uh, it, this is a drawing game so at the end of that I know Aronian is really beating himself up guys go ahead and comment let me know what did you think about this game what did you think about that blunder have you guys ever seen a game where a GM just completely blundered like this before let me know in the comment section. All right, so there was four draws today. Every single game was a draw. So Fabiano Caruana is still leading with three and a half points. Okay, guys, I hope you enjoyed the video. Don't forget to comment, like, and subscribe. See you guys in round six.